Hello, my clay students. I'm coming to you live from my very dining room to show you how to create your slab face. You've already created your template out of paper. Some of you did three-sided ones and some of you did four-sided ones. Probably you don't have a bottom on it. We're gonna add that with clay. The important thing is, is that all your sides should be touching. We don't want to have big areas of negative space or holes. We want to see the shape become a three-dimensional form. And that's going to happen when the wider parts curve out and the thinner parts curve inward. So you can see I'm going to do a three-sided vessel. I've already cut my slabs out of clay. And so I cut them pretty thick, maybe almost half an inch. And so what I'm going to do now is decide which side I like better. I've got kind of a textured side and kind of a plain side. And what I'm going to do is basically put it into that curvy shape that's going to echo the side of my vase, just to kind of help it. Now sometimes I'll use a rolling pin to let things drape for a little bit, and that will kind of help hold the shape. So I want to do that with all three sides of my lovely vase. And if your clay is too soft, if it's too plastic and it's falling apart, if it's just like flopping down, maybe just let it sit out for a little bit on your rolling pin or wherever you need it to be so that it can start to kind of firm up and get a little bit more, you know, stronger. Sorry, I can't apparently clay and talk at the same time. So what I'm doing with mine now is I'm giving it a little curve so it kind of stands up. So I'm going to imagine that I'm going to start putting my first two sides together. Now the real issue is, is that I've cut these flat, so I have these very square shaped edges that aren't going to fit together. What I want to do is create a little mitered corner so that my edges really fit together nicely. So what I'm gonna do is use my fettling knife and I'm either gonna press and flatten, I think that's the easiest, or you can actually trim off a little bit. So let me show you the difference. I'm just kind of flattening and exposing more of a flat side like that so that it's going to connect better together. I'm going to do that with all six of my sides that I'm going to be joining. And sometimes as you're joining your sides, it might be helpful to have some heavy containers or something that can prop up your clay, kind of be an extra pair of hands because I don't want you to get frustrated. But if your clay is kind of firmed up and not too plastic, it will work very well. So I'm just taking off those sharp corners, kind of pressing them so they're more of an angle. And then what's going to happen is they are going to fit together better. You can see that this is going to fit together just like that and be kind of a triangle shape because mine is three-sided. So what I'm going to do next, now that these two are ready, I'm just going to do some gentle scoring. I'm not going to add any slip because I feel like my clay is pretty plastic and I don't want to make it weaker by introducing a lot of moisture to these surfaces. But I am going to rough them up so that I can press them together really, really firmly and really have those little tiny clay cells join together. So I've roughed it right up. Now I can look at my template to kind of get the right angle that I want to have. But I can see, let me see, I'll get right here, that what I want to do is I want to start pressing together these edges. And I am pressing pretty firmly each little like centimeter. I'm giving it a really good press. I'm not trying to like mush the shape at all, but I really want to join it. And then I'm going to pinch it and I will probably eventually use my tool, my rib tool to smooth it. But for right now, 
I'm going to pinch that a little bit more. You could end up having like a really nice sharp edge on it, or maybe you want it to be a little bit rounder. And right now it's pretty plastic, so it's not going to do much in way of getting really sharp. Let me turn it around and you can see the other side. So I'm getting a little bit of softening right now. Like what's happening if I let my clay down, it's just kind of mushing. So I might need to prop it up with something. Perhaps a handy pumpkin will do. Maybe you've got something around your house. Maybe you wanna take like a tube or something. You can find lots of things. Now, it might be a good idea for you to add in a thin coil in there to give it some added strength. So I'm just cutting a little piece of clay and I'm rolling it to be probably about the thickness of a pencil. And I can put it right in here, if I can work backwards, and I would blend it, kind of press it into my crease. I don't want there to be any air bubbles. So I'm using my tool and making sure that there's no hidden air bubbles under there. And I'm pressing it in. And that is going to make that whole edge a little bit stronger. So I put it in there. And now what I would do is use my fingers or a wooden tool to blend, 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 and make it one even surface. When everything is one surface, it's going to join and stay together better. Kind of like when you made the inside of your Joman pottery pieces out of the coils and you blended them, that gave them lots of strength. So that's really helping. So I'll blend, blend, blend. I will probably spend a lot of time blending in there. Now, what I wanna do, I'm gonna prop that right there. Oh good, you can still see. And I am going to score Oh, Gabriel. And I am going to score this edge and this edge over here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Just roughing it up. If your slab does get too dry, you might need to add a little slip. But you can probably tell at this point. You've been working with clay long enough. I'm going to kind of give a little angle to that one and this side. So that they'll really fit together nicely. And I'm gonna score these a little bit too. So you might have some other things to score with. You might have like a plastic fork. That could work great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that curve and I am going to add this third piece on. So I might need to have that rest upon my rolling pin just to help. And then I am going to press, press, press this first edge. I'm really, I'm pinching it pretty firmly. Firm enough so it joins, but not so much that it becomes out of shape. And you can see that I need to really join that seam together and then do a lot of blending on it and really get the kind of shape I want it to look like. And on the inside, I am going to add another little coil to give it some strength. So I'm cutting a little, a little piece and I've got my little coil especially up near the edge. I feel like it's giving it some good strength. And I'm using my tool to blend. I could also use my finger to blend and really make it strong. And all the time I wanna just be like working on my craftsmanship, making it really nice. So I'm gonna rotate it now. And my pottery piece is pretty heavy because it's very wet. And I'm going to pinch this last one together. So you can see that's why it's so important to do your shape, to really bend it into the form. That's why we practiced first with the paper so that you can really see how it goes together. So now that I have my three sides on, they're really helping each other to hold up. But you can see my form is a little, 
a little lumpy and I really want to spend time now perfecting it and really blending and I'll probably get another coil on the inside of there. I'm going to make sure this seam is nice. So at this point you can even say, oh, what if I like my shape better like that? That could look nice. Now what I like to do is I just will probably spend maybe 20 to 30 minutes really smoothing out the seams and even using my pinching skills to pinch out the form and get it to look just the way I want it. I want to make sure everything is really joined together well. And it's still pretty plastic, so there's a lot I can do at this point, but then there's some things I'll want to do when it gets a little bit firmer. So I'm blending, blending. I would probably want to get another little coil on the inside of that side that I just put together. But you can see it's looking pretty good and it's looking quite a lot like my paper template. It's gonna be a little thicker, a little wider, much heavier. And sometimes what I like to do at this point is I also like to, sometimes I pinch my rim or the lip of the pottery piece to make it a little bit thinner and more delicate. And I can even kind of pinch it to get a little bit more flair. I can really emphasize the form of my pottery. I can go in and really like press out with my fingers because we want to hold a lot of space inside the pottery. You want it to be a beautiful form that has a lovely silhouette to it. So we can kind of emphasize everything. And then what you would want to do before letting it rest for a little bit is you would want to cut a bottom for your pottery piece. You don't want it to be empty on the bottom. Now when I look at the bottom of mine, I can see my triangle looks kind of more like a piece of pie, like a wedge of pie. So I can see that I'm going to have to like kind of get that shape a little bit more symmetrical. But what I would do at this point is I would use a little scrap of clay and sometimes I would trace the bottom of my piece. And so that's probably an easy way for you to do it. So I'm just tracing and using a fettling knife to cut the basic form. And we would want to slip and score this on really strongly. We don't want to have like a vase full of flowers and have it all of a sudden come undone. I'm gonna give this a little bit more of a trim. And so what I would do on this bottom part, first I would make sure that I get in on the inside and smooth everything I can when I have easy access to it. So I would really make my form nice, make sure nothing is a funny shape. And then I'm gonna slip and score, maybe not slip, just score, because my, my clay is pretty moist, pretty plastic. So I'm definitely scoring this whole surface. And then I would definitely, you see that? I would definitely score the edges of my triangle as well. Just around the bottom edge where they're where the two sides are gonna join. And then what I would want to do is press pretty firmly. And if I've got any like a little weird shapes that are a little bit too big, I can trim them. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press, I'm actually gonna get my hand on the inside because I feel like my clay is pretty soft right there. So I have some fingers on the inside that I'm using to press up against the bottom as I press on the outside. Now I've got a little extra flap there that is, I'm, I'll probably end up trimming some of that off, but I'm gonna blend it right in for now. So I'm really just pressing, I've got a little extra. And then I will spend time blending both on the outside and on the inside. So at this point, I would just keep working on my craftsmanship, really blending everything together. I do not wanna have any seams. But if you want to, if you want it to sit flat, you can. If you wanna add some kind of little bottom to it, you can. You can add all the embellishments you want. 
See that? Kids, that was a side that I didn't put the little extra piece on yet. And so it had some pressure. So I would spend time now really working on the craftsmanship, making sure it's strong. And remember that right now it's very plastic. It's very soft. It's going to be a little wobbly because it's going to get stronger and stronger as it dries. But we don't want it to dry too quickly. So I would like you, after you spend some time really smoothing it and blending and making sure it's strong, I want you to wrap it in a plastic bag and then I'm going to show you some more steps next class about how to use your lovely little ribs. Remember we made our handmade ribs out of some plastic. We can use those to smooth and to take off a lot of the extra and really make our form better. Like see that ugly seam right there? When we're all done, that's not going to show at all. We're going to make sure it's all smooth. But basically that's the way that we're going to hold it all together. Now what I would do if I can, I would get a coil down there at the bottom and blend, 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 and make sure that that little seam on the inside is as smooth as it can be. Sometimes when I don't have a wooden tool, I'll use a wooden handle to blend, or sometimes another kitchen tool. Or I'll wrap it up and take it to school tomorrow and finish my next demonstration there. So that is what you're going to do to create a slab vessel based on your template. So if you feel like your template is too big or you want to change it, you don't have to use the template you practiced on. You can always make a new one. That's okay with me too. All right, kids, call me with any questions. Thanks. Bye-bye.